You know, um, a lot of people ask me, because I'm 40 years old, and uh, I play a bunch of games, man. I own a bunch of systems. I can truly call myself a gamer because I have played everything from Atari, the various different versions of Ataris, including my favorite 7800, okay, from Spectrum ZX, Sinclair, from Commodore 64, Amiga 500, from my first IBM computer with a floppy disk, uh, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, SNES, Sega Genesis, list goes on and on and on. Sega CD, and of course, here we are, Sega Saturn. And then, of course, everything after that I have owned and played till now. So I can call myself a gamer easily because I have played through all these games and I have experienced them all. And this is why sometimes I am having a, a little bit different approach on how I feel about today's gaming generation. As you all know, I'm not a huge fan of big multiplayer games. I'm not a huge fan of uh, DLCs. I'm not a huge fan of microtransactions. I'm a fan of old school gaming where you purchase a game and you get the full package. That's that. You get everything in that full package. But those days are long, long gone. And I'm going to take you back in time here a little bit. We're going to go back to 1997. And uh, we're going to talk about Enemy Zero. Okay, This is a long time ago. Enemy Zero, it's an old game. You guys remember, this is 1997. Uh, roughly around late 1996. It was released in Japan in 1996. I think came in United States 1997. Um, so we're talking a very old game here. And what I'm about to show you might seem weird to you. For those of you who didn't exist back then, you know, you weren't born. So for those of you, this might be kind of strange. Like, what kind of a game is this? What is this? Uh, you know, back then in early 90s, late 90s, um, there was still a FMVs. FMV, it's a full movie video where you actually have pre-recorded video and then click and point with a character where you go through this linear uh, scripted uh, video click type movie experience and you know it worked for a few games it worked on Vin, uh, Wing Commander 1 and 2 and 3 uh, there's some other games as well but this was a step up from that into a 3D uh, graphical CGI if you will instead of a real-time video and this was the first step up from FMVs into a graphical FMV where you use a 3D character and 3D environment and the warp was the first one to start with a D. Uh, D was a psychological horror adventure game that uses this character digital woman character called Laura. Now, they use the same exact digital character in this game, Enemy Zero, Laura as well. She doesn't speak, she doesn't say anything, uh, she just pretty much, you control her, uh, and then as you go 
you know, you find out the outcome of the story. But, you know, back then, this was something very unique. You know, this is something that I enjoyed. Uh, and I have to say that this game, even to this day, Enemy Zero, still stands as a very unique horror adventure game. Before we start, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, she wakes up on the spaceship. And once she wakes up on the spaceship from her, you know, sleeping capsule, traveling bed, once she wakes up, she realizes that something's wrong. There's an emergency. Something has actually taken the advantage of the ship. She doesn't know what it is. So she's investigating what's going on with the ship. There seems to be some sort of entity that has possessed the ship, but the entity is invisible. And you can't see it. You, you know, you don't know where it is. The only way you can detect it is through a device that she has. And that device has this very eerie beeping sound uh, that was really nerve-wracking when I played this game back then at night. So I would say I would say that this is still one of those horror games that still holds up to this day. And hopefully they will make a remake of this game. I would love to see the same director. I don't know if he's still alive or not. Uh, I would love to see somebody buy the warp uh, rights of this game and then do a remake of this game, Enemy Zero, I think it would have been great. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead. Let me load up the game. Let me show you what the D was all about. This is one of the games that I picked up on Sega Saturn next to D and next to uh, Panzer Dragon. Panzer Dragon was a, a all-time must-have for Sega Saturn. If you never played Panzer Dragon, uh, you have to. Panzer Dragon Legacy Saga. I think it was called Panzer Dragon Saga. You have to play it. Now, this is Laura. And this is her device. This is where she saves the game. Uh, and what was so unique about this device was the fact that you have to find this charging station to charge the batteries on this little device. Because if you don't charge the batteries and your, you know, your batteries die, then you can't save the game and you can't load the game. So you constantly have to look for this uh, battery uh, charger station and that made the game even more challenging and more unique so once I load the data she will play it and she will tell you uh, what happened and you know what this organism is and all that so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume a little bit up so let me uh, load the data Voice record number 011, Laura Lewis. Hypersleep was instantaneously interrupted with the activation into emergency mode. I have now confirmed that the formless thing that attacked Parker is actually without solid form. I believe it to be an organism that our eyes cannot perceive. As you can see, she just said that it's the, some sort of an entity organism that you can't see. And I think that's what made this game even more scarier, is you can't see the enemy. But it's there. And it's killing. And it's invisible. You know. And I think that's what makes it even more terrifying, is 
And I think this is where a true horror formula comes in. It comes in the form of not you seeing the monster, but you hearing it, but you can't see it. And you don't know what it looks like. And it's invisible. But you know it can kill you. And I think that's where the true horror comes in, in this game. Now, this was the style of gameplay back then. You know, it was like a FMV, very linear, but in this case, it's a 3D uh, game that it's very linear, where you can only move to certain directions when you enter a room, and you can only ex explore certain areas. They're scripted, they're linear. Like, for example, here, I need to figure out how to turn this power back on. But I don't know yet. It has uh, this game has a lot of uh, puzzles that you need to uh, figure out and fix, which makes it also challenging as well. But it's a very intriguing game. It's a very interesting game because once you get into it, you. I think what really makes it interesting is you trying to figure out what's going on. You know, this is what's so interesting about these types of games. Uh, and Warp, and the ND2, and this game is trying to figure out what's going on. And that's what keeps you moving forward. It's the story, and it's trying to figure out what the hell is this thing that has possessed the ship? What is this entity? You know, so... This biological, invisible entity, this alien entity, whatever it is, that has uh, hijacked the ship. As you can see, you can move around left and right. Uh, now, obviously, I don't know what to do here. Uh, I have to figure this out. The, uh, the power needs to be turned on, but I don't know how to turn it back on to open this door, this hangar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the upper deck I want to show you some of the things on the upper deck that are like really important. Uh, but this is how this game plays. And, you know, there's a lot of influence here by the alien. You know, uh, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of uh, Ridley Scott influence here from the original alien. When you look at the corridors, very uh, claustrophobic corridors moving through the ship, you know, and this is like the worst place you can be if there's uh, some kind of entity chasing you on these open corridors like this. So there's a lot of that uh, influence from Ridley Scott. But then again, Ridley Scott, Alien, and Giger's design of the Alien and the ship was always used as, I mean, he was influenced by so many other movies after that, you know in the 80s and, and 90s and stuff like that. Now, if you put a pair of headphones, this game can be creepy. It can be uh, very scary. I remember playing this at night when this game came out, and uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. There was moments where it gave me the creeps, like uh, really, like especially when your device is beeping and you know the enemy is there, 
and you know you gotta make that shot. You got you gotta shoot it. You can't miss once. If you do, the uh, this entity will kill you. That was also very scary as well. Now the only way you can see where you're going it's by entering this hub and I'm gonna go to a Laura's room and I'm gonna show you the hub I think it's right over here because the only way you can look at the map it's by going to that hub and then from there you can see the map and which deck of the ship you need to go and all that but graphically this was pretty outstanding back then you know you guys have to remember this is 1996 you know for its time it was great obviously right now it's outdated Obviously, this one is closed. We cannot go through there. We have to go back. We're going to go back. I think I know where to go from here. I think it's right here. I'm positive it's here. Yeah, let's go right here. Now, this is the only way for you to be able to see uh, the information about the ship, the data about the ship, and also to see to whom you can reach on the phone, video phone. This is the crew that's on the ship. Uh, let's go and try Kimberly. We don't have our access code. Let's try Marcus. Network error, doesn't work. And of course, Parker died. He got killed by this uh, invisible entity. But let me show you uh, the database. This is the database of the, uh, the ship and the crew. The Aki is basically the ship that you're on, and it was headed back to Earth, but then all of a sudden, suddenly, something entered the ship. And this is where it's this is where the story becomes very creepy and interesting. Because the entity that has entered the ship, you can't obviously see it. And the only way you can trace it is through this little device that beeps. And the stronger the beep is, the faster the beep, it means the closer it is to you. And I like that's like the only way you can detect it. Now here you have the card key, you got the elevator. Uh, this basically just letting you know what this ship consists of. Uh, it's giving you all the information about the ship and whatnot. Uh, with different key disks 
are used for, uh, what the emergency program is, what the hypersleep units are. That's, that's the hypersleep that you sleep on when you travel for long, long distances. Connection door locks, CD keys, and stuff like that. And so basically, all the information you would need for you to understand what each one of these items does. Now here you also have the crew, the personal file, uh, and the crew data, so you can get to know who these uh, individuals are. Uh, you got Kimberly, she's a counselor. She is 32 female. You got Laura, that's her. It's interesting, the same character, Kimberly, Kim, was used in a D, uh, D2 horror game, along with the Laura. You got David, male 31. He's, I believe, a doctor. No, actually, he's a sub-captain. You got George. He's a computer engineer. You got Ronnie. He's the captain pilot, age 45. They made him look like uh, like Dallas in the Alien. So as you can see, obviously Japanese and the developer of this game was influenced by Alien. But then again, everyone else was influenced by Alien. That movie set the standard and the rest of it just followed in Hollywood. That shows you what inspiration that Ridley Scott movie had for the rest of the movies that came after that. Uh, you got Marcus. He's a doctor. Parker. Uh, he's deceased. He died. He's the engineer. And here, this is the personal file. The personal file basically... It's for you to learn. Oh, it's not available. Wow, that's interesting. Let's go to the information. The information is where you learn about the ship, the map of the ship. Uh, and this is like the only way that you can get some sense of where you need to go uh, like this is the uh, the ship that's called the Aki and you part of the ship you're inside of it it's a big giant almost think about it like a a huge like seven to eight buildings put together as a flying ship like it's like a one big downtown of a spaceship it's a very big spaceship and uh, that's why there's so much for you to explore you know and you can see uh, it's returning to earth and let you know the time and also letting you know there's an emergency when you click on the map uh, you can see where you are, and it's the, this was the important part of the game. It's for you to get familiarized with where you're going. Because when you go out, you can't pull out the map to see where you are. You need to memorize where you are, and you need to remember which way to go. Straight, right, right, and then right. So... What developers of this, game, of this game were trying to do, they were trying to teach you on how to survive, how to memorize the ships and corridors. And I think that's what made it really challenging to play. You know what I mean? But again, of course the game is outdated by today's standards. But I think if you never played this game and, and uh, if you're interested in maybe playing this game, I think uh, 
you should definitely pick it up. If you pick up Sega Saturn, I would definitely advise you to go check this game. You know. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna take you to Laura's room before I end the video. So I'm gonna go straight and then left. So remember, we looked at the map, <clears throat> and we now we know we got to go straight and then left to go to Laura's room. And that's what this game teaches you. It teaches you to rememberize uh, the map and where you need to go. Now, this is Laura's room. Uh, this is where all of her stuffs are. But there's some weird stuff like happening even in her room. Like when she touches this plant, like there's like this weird butterfly, but you don't know what it is and what the purpose of that butterfly is. It's almost like a holographic butterfly or something and, and she doesn't know what it is. I mean, there's so many weird moments in this game, uh, both psychologically and uh, well, I think psychologically is where this game it, it, it wins, is the fact that you don't know what this thing is, you don't know how it looks, and you can't see it. There was something here in this cabinet, but we already picked it up in the beginning of the game. Uh, there was something here too as well, but she already picked it up. And of course, this is her same exact device that she uses and remember the only way you can look at the map is through this device right here means you need to find these uh, consoles to be able to communicate if you can now there was a message that was sent to her for her to go to a locker room to pick a key card so she can go down to the deck one I mean deck two I'm sorry and that message was sent right over here by this individual called Ronnie. Laura, I'm worried about Parker. Proceed directly to Parker's quarters in the basement. What? No! It seems like he's dead too now. Connection refused. Connection refused from the other one as well. So, 
Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can say about this game except that um, if you love mysterious, strange, horror type of a games, I think this will definitely satisfy your needs. But it's not for everyone, you know, this game, it's not for everyone. It wasn't made for everyone back then, nor is it made for everyone today. But I think this still holds up to me as, as one of the scariest games out there. I mean, uh, you need to play through this, finish the entire four discs. This game came packed with four discs. Back and forth, you have to swipe the discs. It's a very lengthy game. And there's so much in this game I can talk about, you know, but uh, I don't want to spoil it. I think this is something that you guys need to experience. You need to, if you pick up Sega Saturn, I would highly recommend that you try this game. I personally would love to see a remake of this game. And uh, I think that would be a great remake. If they ever do a remake, they should do a remake of two games. This one, D and D2. Like... Those three types of games would definitely be great. Enemy Zero, D1, and D2, in my opinion, would be a perfect remix. If they can get a hold of a license and copyrights for this game, that would be great. Well, anyway, this is Enemy Zero, Sega Saturn, man. I took you down a memory lane again. I walk you down, kind of like a DVD commentary, if you will. Because I played all these games, and, and if you guys haven't played them, I highly recommend that you guys do. You know. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you guys liked it. Thank you for watching.